Welcome to another video. We want to find all integer values of x such that when you plug in those integer values into this quadratic expression, the answer you get is going to be a positive integral power of a prime. What does that mean? It means your answer has got to be positive. That's number one. It has to be an integer. And it also has to be the power of a prime number. So you can get answers like 2 to the third, which is 8. 8 will be a good answer, okay? Because 8 can be written as the power of a prime number. 2 to the third, 25 is a good answer. That's 5 squared, or 49, 7 squared, or 3 to the fourth, 81 is a good answer. 1 also is a good answer, because 1 can be written as 5 to the zero. Mm-hmm, an integral power of a prime. So if you get one, that's also good. So we're looking for all values of x that will give us answers like that. Let's get into the video. Okay. This question is from the 2011 Harvard MIT math tournament. And I was wondering why they gave us a quadratic that could be factored because that makes life a lot easier because then we can start looking at the behavior of the factors. Maybe they might just give us the power of an integer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, see, basically what they want we want x such that 2x squared plus x minus 6 is just some prime number raised to power k. That's what we're looking for. So I know that this can be factored. The product of two numbers can never give you the power of a prime unless each of them is a power of the same prime. So this is like p to the a, this is like p to the b, and the sum of those powers is what's going to give you k. That's how numbers behave. Okay? You cannot form a prime number by composition. You can get some of it here, some of it here. No, it is all of it here, all of it here, to different degrees, and those degrees will add up to give you this one. So what we can say is, if this is a, a power of p, and this is a power of p, then it does not mean they're positive. So that's where we come here, because you, this answer could be a negative. You can have a number like negative 2 here, and here could be negative 4. Well, negative 2 times negative 4 will give you positive 8. So this is capable of being negative. This is capable of being negative, but their product will end up being positive. So we're not looking at the signs right now. We're looking at whether it's a power of 2, using 2 as just an example. So what we're going to say is, um, if this is a power of p, and this is a power of p, any p, then p divides this, p divides this, so the greatest common factor of these two expressions must be p or a power of p. So, how do we find the greatest common factor of two algebraic expressions? Easy. We're going to use the Euclidean algorithm. The, no the biggest number that divides 12 and 32 is the same thing as the biggest number this is the same thing as the GCD according to the Euclidean algorithm. See, because 12 is less than 32, you will subtract as many 12s from 32. How many 12s can you subtract from 32? You're going to get, that's 24, two of them. If you subtract 24 from 32, you're going to get 8. So it's the same thing as finding the GCD of 12 and 8 which obviously we know is going to be 4. Well, you knew this was 4. But let's assume you still don't know what the GCD of 12 and 32 is. Even by looking at 12 and 8, 
you repeat the process, subtract the maximum number of eights you can subtract from 12 so that your answer, it is still the GCD of, if you subtract eight from 12, you're gonna get four. And here you have eight staying here. So what's the greatest common divisor of four and eight is the same thing. Let's say you still don't know. <laughs> you do the same thing. You subtract four from eight, then it's gonna be equal to the GCD of four. And if you subtract this from this, okay, what is the greatest common divisor of this? This is so obvious that it is four, but let's still say you don't know. Well, you're gonna subtract one from the other. It's gonna be GCD of, let's say you subtract this from this, you're gonna get zero and you're gonna get four. Whenever zero shows up, it means the previous line was your GCD. So that's the same thing we're gonna do here. The greatest common divisor of this and this will use the Euclidean algorithm. So we're gonna say that let's find the GCD using the Euclidean algorithm by the Euclidean algorithm. I'm gonna write, okay, let me just write it. Euclidean algorithm. This is equal to the GCD of, so I'm gonna look at the smaller one subtracted from the bigger one. It is easy to assume that this is the smaller one relative to this, because this has two X's, this has one. Well, we have to subtract the maximum number that's possible because I don't want X showing up again. So I'm going to write this as X plus two comma, 2x minus 3 minus the maximum I can subtract, which is 2 of this, okay? You'll see that it, it resolves now. This is equal to the GCD of x plus 2, and 2x minus 2x is gone, minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7. So the greatest common divisor of these two expressions is the same as the greatest common divisor of x plus two and negative seven. Now, because minus seven is a prime number, it does not have GCD with any other number apart from seven and itself. No, and one, come on, <laughs> okay? So it is either the GCD we're looking for here is seven or minus seven, or it is one or minus one, because this is a prime number, always one or minus one, seven or minus seven. And that's where we're gonna do all our work, okay? Just to clarify something, your mind might be telling you, no, what if this is a number like three or a number like 11? Can't this just be any number? It cannot be. Let's assume it's one of those numbers. Let's say it's three. Suppose x plus two, 2 is 3. Well, this is going to be 3 times another number, but 3 times another number cannot give you 3 to a power or 5 to a power. So you notice that you can't have different numbers. The only possible numbers you can have are this and this, which means you will either have 1 and a power or you're going to have the same number, 3, 3, or 7, 7, or 5, 5, or 2, 2, whatever the prime is, or 1 times that prime. But you can have a multiple combination of numbers. Make sense? Because of this definition, it must be a power of the same prime number. Now, so we go here and we say um, cases. Case one. So the first case is we're gonna say that x plus two equals one. We're gonna assume this is one and then this is some power of p. Okay, x plus two equals one, which implies that x equals, uh, this would be minus one if you subtract two from both sides and we're gonna combine that to 2x minus three will be equal to, if x is negative one, this is going to be negative two minus three, that's negative five. 
Well, negative 5 is a power. This is negative 5 to the 1. You see that? The only problem here is this is positive. This is negative. It is impossible for plus and minus to give you a positive outcome. So this cannot be our answer. A second possibility is x plus 2 equals minus 1, which implies x equals negative 3. And 2x minus 3 will be equal to, if you put negative 3 here, that's negative 6, that's negative 9. Oh, negative 9 works because negative 9 is actually negative 3 squared. And if you multiply minus 1 by this, you're going to get 9. Oh, and minus 1 times 9, minus 1 times 9, minus 9 equals 9, which is equal to 3 squared. Check. So it means x equals negative 3 is a solution. Case 3. So for case 3, the condition is x plus 2 equals 7, which implies x equals negative 5. If x is negative 5, what do we have? And 2x minus 3 will be equal to negative 10. Yeah, put negative 5 here. That's negative 10 minus 3. That's negative 13. Negative 13. Well, you have positive times a negative will not give us a positive. So this is not our answer. And then we move on to x plus 2 equals negative 7, which implies x equals negative 9. And 2x minus 3 will be equal to negative 9 minus, oh, negative 18 minus 3 is negative 21. Yeah, you see there are now weird numbers because this is not a prime number. It is the composition of numbers of 3 and 7 inside here. So this can't even be the answer. Okay, so there's no point trying. Yeah, negative 7 times this is 3 times 7 squared. So it doesn't meet the condition of being just one prime number raised to a power. Okay, let's do case 5. It's going to be 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3 equals, let's start with 1, just like we did here. We're going to switch all these 4 also. Um, the implication of this is that if we solve this, x equals 2. So if this is 1, then you solve for x, you get x equals 2. And that means that, so you got x plus 2 will now be equal to 2 plus 2, which is 4. Well, we know that 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So this is 1 times 4 is 4. So it works just like this case. 1 times 4 works, which is so 1 times 4 equals 4, which is 2 squared, which is correct. Let's plug in 2 here. It's going to be 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 minus 6 is 2 squared, which is the same answer we got here. Okay, so let's do case, oh, x equals 2 is a solution. Where is it? we got to write that. Let's do case 6. Case 6, we switch this to negative 1, and it tells us that we have 2x minus 3 equals negative 1. That means x is negative 1. That implies x equals negative 1. No, x equals, this is going to be 2, x equals 1. Huh, x equals 1. And if you plug in 1 here, x plus 2 will be equal to 1 plus 2, 3. Oh, this looks like it's going to work. Oh, negative times positive will not work. So we're done with that. Let's finish case 7 here. We've got case 7 it means that 2x uh, minus 3 will be positive 7. That implies that x will be 5. x equals 5. And 
x plus 2 equals 7. This is positive. This is positive. Oh, and the product of the 2 is 7 squared. 7 times 7 is 7 squared, which meets our condition. So x equals um, 5 is a solution. Case A is going to be 2x minus 3 equals negative 7, um, which implies that x will be what? Negative 4, negative 2. Is it negative 2? That's negative 4, yes. And let's write it here. And x plus 2 equals 0. Oh, that's not correct. It is impossible for you to have 0 because if you multiply this, you get 0. But we're asking for a positive power, not a 0 power. Anything that's 0 is not positive. So you can see we found all the three solutions we're supposed to hunt. So we say, therefore, x is in the set um, negative 3, 2, and 5. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.